Okay, hi everybody. <laughs> yeah, this is a friendly crowd. That's nice. Uh, so my name is Kent C. Dodds, and I am going to be talking about a really awesome new feature coming to React. I, I titled this talk React the Future is Now because I kind of assumed that this feature would be available by now, but it's actually not. It's still in alpha. So the future is still in the future. Um, <laughs> But uh, it, will be, it will be available soon, and it's going to just be amazing. So um, before we get into things, uh, I'll just introduce myself really quick. So I'm Kent C. Dodds. I live here. I'm local in Utah. I live in Pleasant Grove. I have a wife, a daughter, and three boys. Um, my daughter is six. Um, so I don't know why we got a dog, but um, we did with all of that craziness. Um, I work for PayPal, and I'm Kent C. Dodds anywhere on the web. Um, I did want to talk about my testing JavaScript course. If you want to get into testing in JavaScript, this is the biggest resource on the web. Um, it is awesome. I'm also on Egghead and Frontend Masters. I should have had you guess what that was, because uh, like the karate thing, master, right? I, emojis are hard. Um, I have a, a newsletter you can check out, um, and my newsletter is weekly. I, that feeds into my blog. Two weeks later, my newsletter goes to my blog. Really great stuff. How many people are subscribed, actually? Anybody subscribed? Hey, cool. Hey, friends. Is it good? Thumbs up? You're still subscribed, so um, that's, that's good. Um, <clears throat> and then I have a YouTube channel where I actually live stream daily for anywhere from like 10, to, uh, 10 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on what I'm working on. Um, just about random little things um, that people are asking me about all the time. There's another thing that I have here. Um, here let's do a question. Question mark kcd.im slash AMA. So I haven't asked me anything. I've answered over like 400 questions now um, on GitHub. And so if you have a, a question about like how do you do this or whatever, I probably answered that already. But if I haven't, you can go ask me on there. I and mean, then I try to answer relatively quickly. Um, I'm trying to use my IDE as a presentation tool. This is the first time I've done this. Um, I, I've live coded a lot for my talks and stuff, but I've never actually used um, code as my slides, which is uh, kind of interesting. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so uh, I'm supposed to thank our sponsors, which I, I don't have any problem doing. Um, they're great. Um, this thing is rocking, sorry. Um, so yeah, thank you to all of these sponsors who've made this conference possible um, and enabled all of you to, to come here and learn and, and me to come here and learn also. Um, before we get too much into things though, I'd like to invite everybody to please stand up. You can step to the side or something. We're going to be doing this thing called exercise. Um, so put your arms out in front of you like this. And squat down. Come back up. This is, a, this is an air squat. Your legs are like, what just happened? Uh, OK, we're going to do 12 of these together. Count with me. Ready? One, two, count louder. Three, four, hey, five, Wow, man. All right, six, seven. Hey, you're doing great. Nine. Nine. This is so fun. I'm going to start over. Ten. One. No, just kidding. Eleven. Eleven. And twelve. Twelve. Awesome. Stretch over your head as high as you can. And then stretch over to one side. Over to the other. Awesome. That feels great. Now, before you sit down, turn to the person next to you and thank them for coming to the conference. And then sit down. <laughs> All right. Good. So, I, I've actually... It just occurred to me I should do that at the end because you're all smiling. And it'd be great to have everybody smiling as they're leaving my talk. It's like, what did you talk about? Um, <laughs> yeah, exercise. Yeah, so uh, physical, uh, being physically fit makes our brains more ready to learn. And so that's one of the reasons I do that. Um, okay, I also like to set up expectations for my talks. So this talk is an, kind of an introduction to hooks. Uh, it's also like React hooks. How many of you know what I'm talking about when I say React hooks? Okay, cool. So how many of you write React every day for your work? Okay, how many of you have written a line of React in your life? Okay, cool. <laughs> so this is going to be um, an intro to a lot of things for some of you, which is great. I'm, I'm happy to have you here. Okay, so I'm going to be doing some, some live coding. I'm going to show you some code examples. And we are going to be talking about some, um, some problems in React today 
and how this new feature that's coming to React is going to alleviate a bunch of those problems. Um, and as, <coughs> as, as I say, um, React hooks allows me to say goodbye to things in React that I didn't think could be improved. Um, so I already thought React was super, super awesome. Um, these features make React just that much cooler to me. Um, I'm not mandating that you rewrite your apps. Um, in fact, uh, React is all about incremental adoption and, um, and a, a nice upgrade path for you. <coughs> uh, there's, uh, React has actually been rewritten. The framework itself has been rewritten. And that was released in uh, React 16. Um, but people didn't really have to make a whole bunch of changes. So it's not like a, a total framework rewrite and API change and everything. This is an opt-in new API that you can um, opt into um, with your new code. Uh, and it's totally up to you if you want to use it, but after you've tried it, you're like, you never want to do anything else because it's so much better. Um, also, this is not production code because technically this is all alpha stuff still. Uh, if if you, we look in our package JSON here, we're going to see React, um, alpha, alpha, alpha. So it's still technically not available officially yet, um, but hopefully it will be soon. Uh, okay. Sure, save that. So we're on five. So the, the premise of my talk is, what makes React so hard? Like, I, I like to start with why. This is why um, React hooks this new feature is, is coming around, is because there are some things about React that are hard. So um, I teach React a lot. Um, I, I teach React, I teach testing, I teach JavaScript. And whenever I teach React to beginners, by far, the biggest struggle that people have is not with React itself, but with JavaScript. Um, because React itself is actually pretty small and simple, and JavaScript is a little bit more um, on the complicated side, um, at least the, the APIs that React has you use. Um, another thing that people struggle with a little bit are life cycles, and we're going to uh, give a, uh, take a look at that. And then logic reuse. Um, I have an entire course on Egg.io all about patterns in React um, that enable flexibility and reuse of components and uh, reuse of logic in, in your React components. And um, what React Hooks does is lots of those patterns aren't really necessary anymore because um, Hooks, the Hooks API is just so good. Um, it, it, it makes logic reuse just so much easier. So let's talk about each one of these um, a little bit further with some examples. So I want you to look at this, and those of you veterans out there in React, can you find the bug? What is the bug in this counter component? The longer it takes, the, the more you prove my point, so that's, that's great. <laughs> so I'll tell you the bug. What's going to happen is um, when we run this line of code, this is uh, this dot set state is not defined. Anybody know why? So the reason is that we're passing um, this function to onClick, and then React is going to say, oh, "Okay, call that onClick function," but it's not calling it with um, the right thing on the left side of the dot, which is what determines what this is. And so uh, because of that fact. It's, um, this will not be defined, and this will blow up. So the solution to this is um, <clears throat> if you don't want to use non-standard syntax um, yet, then you have to do this. This dot increment equals this dot bind, or this dot increment, oops, dot bind this. That's what you have to do. So that you force this to be the instance of your component, right? And that's super annoying to write, especially if you have um, like a bunch of these handlers, you're going to wind up with a lot of this, right? How many people have this in their code? Yeah, OK. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, and so luckily for us, there's a new feature coming out um, that allows you to do that, where um, that's called a, a class field. And it is effectively, it's doing this. Those are um, functionally equivalent. So it's just uh, syntax sugar for that, which means you can actually also do this, move that out, and then we can get rid of that constructor. Okay? So it's, it's cool. It's a cool new feature. 
but it's not standard yet. And um, so some people, like you have to have a Babel plugin installed. Luckily that's in Create React app already. So if you're using this, uh, you can do that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's like super not fun to, to have to understand the intricacies of classes and this. And uh, I, I kid you not, when I'm teaching React, I spend a, a huge amount of my time teaching about classes and how this works in JavaScript, not teaching about React. That's kind of frustrating to me as a, an instructor because people think, wow, React sure is complicated. Well, no, it's, it's not. It's JavaScript and classes. And, uh, so I never was really happy with that. Um, so I'm actually pulling your leg a little bit. There's actually two bugs in here. And I, don't, I, I would be surprised if anybody can find the second bug. So the second bug is, um, and not many people uh, know this, but here you have your constructor. This constructor is actually going to take props, and it's going to take this thing called an updater, um, which actually I don't even know what that does. Um, but when you call super, you're supposed to call it with all like with those same things, um, because what super is going to do is it's going to add props onto this. So when I say <coughs> when I call super without those props, this dot props does not exist yet, because super is the one who's assigning props. But if you're not passing the props, then it's not going to have that. Um, and so like the solution is you remove this and you just accept props or what I do is um, I'll just spread the args so I don't have to know like what arguments they are just like pass them all to super okay so that's another little like interest intricacy of uh, classes in JavaScript that it, like it's really easy to miss and it's kind of confusing uh, luckily we can kind of get away with that if you, we just use this syntax because um, this is the default constructor if you don't have a constructor, that's what it is. Um, but it's just a bunch of stuff that we have to learn about when uh, we're really just trying to learn React. So that's JavaScript. That, that's like the, the biggest complications around um, learning React is actually learning JavaScript and, and uh, classes in general. So that's problem number one. So yeah, trick question. There were two bugs, not just this little guy, but also an ant. Um, so let's talk about life cycles. So um, here we have this user context that presumably is going to hold the store, the logged in user. We have this chat feed um, that's going to render um, a chat. And that chat is going to be based off of our geolocation. So um, here in a little bit, I'm going to show you this app um, where based off of your location, you can chat with anybody who is around you. Um, and so if you're like in San Francisco, the chat will be totally different. It's kind of fun. I built it last night. Um, so to accomplish this, we have to subscribe to the feed. Then we have to, uh, oh, one other thing is um, we have a, a document title that gets updated by, for the number of messages that you haven't read yet. Uh, so we have to uh, set the document title. Then we have to subscribe to online status so we can say, hey, you're online, you're offline. Um, and then we have to subscribe to the geolocation to, to know as that is changing, uh, we can make updates. Uh, so we change what chat room you're in at the time. Um, and so that happens when, when the component is initially rendered after it's rendered um, on component did mount. So then we have to clean those things up because we don't want memory leaks, right? So on component will unmount, we have to unsubscribe from all those things. So we're going to do the opposite. Um, basically, this code is like, um, do this thing and then do the opposite thing, right? And that's generally, like, that's really common. We have to do that a lot in React. Um, and one thing, uh, a source of a lot of bugs is for getting component to update. So what if when my uh, location changes, uh, I need to actually unsubscribe from one feed and subscribe to a new one uh, for that new location, right? And so I need to go ahead and uh, compare props. Did my location change? Um, did my stat online status change? All of these different things we have to take into account. So every single time it updates, we basically have to run all of this again, or, or run all of that, and then run all of this again, right? But only when certain things have changed, you know, for performance, we don't want to just do that every single time it updates. That'd be kind of wild. So that's kind of annoying. And then we, we have to do our render. So the thing that I don't like about this uh, is that, and, and it's not like terrible, like you, you can look at this and you can figure out what it's doing. And it's actually kind of a nice layer of abstraction. We put all this stuff in a component and we can use that component anywhere. So like the React that we've always been using is, is still really awesome. It allows us to take this messy, a bit of code and put it into something and then share that anywhere without um, that being a leaky abstraction around everything else. 
So it's not a bad thing. It's just this is not optimal. This isn't. Uh, I would like this to be a little bit easier. Um, and one of the things that makes this most, most difficult for me is when I decide, okay, we don't need the document title thing anymore. So I have to go into here and then into here and then into here and remove all the logic that uh, revolves around the document title. Then uh, there's probably also like some other state or there's um, you know, some other functions that this document uh, title thing is calling. I have to go around a lot of different places to find out where this is. Um, and then, like, let's say that, you know, this geolocation is kind of nice. I want to be able to, to extract that uh, logic and put it into another component. How do we um, share that logic? Okay, so that's, that's our, next, um, our next concern. So lifecycle is kind of um, arbitrarily splits up things that really should be co-located, right? Here we, we have one concern. The concern is su subscribing and unsubscribing from the feed and keeping that subscription up to date and we're spreading that concern across multiple life cycles. So that's the problem. Now, if we want to share that or reuse that logic, you see this is a black box, right? Black, black box, you know, I, I tried. Um, so we, <coughs> we have, um, uh, we, we can do that, but the, the way that we've been able to share logic in React, um, it started with mix-ins. How many people were, were doing React when we had mix-ins? Literally no one? Wow, welcome to React, everybody. It's a brighter world. Um, so uh, what about uh, how many people have used a higher order component? Okay, so that, that, that kind of replaced mixins when we said, okay, react.create class, that's going to go into its own package. Now we're using classes, and all of a sudden we have to worry about this, but that's the way it was. Um, so we, we did away with that, but now we, we lost mixins. <coughs> so um, the, the community came up with this higher order components idea where you can have a function that returns a component that will um, render um, your thing with the, the props um, necessary. We'll take a look at one of those in a little bit. Um, that had a myriad of problems, and so um, the community moved over to render props. How many people have used render props before? Okay, so render props look like this. This was a great solution to our problem. I'm joking. Mm -hmm. This is awful. Um, so render props, actually, they really are good. Um, they, they, allow, they, they allow some really powerful things. And if this is really annoying to us, we can extract that into another function, make, it, make a new component out of this, and then just render that one component. Then we, we kind of move this pyramid of doom over to a separate component that is just isolated from the rest of our presentation logic, which is fine. Uh, so I, I never really liked this, but I, I was okay with it because of what it, it allowed me to do which is take this logic for subscribing to a feed and updating the document title and uh, subscribing to the online status and the geolocation, separating those out and sharing that uh, logic across multiple components that need that stuff. Um, but aside from the like, pyramid of doom that we have here, um, we also have this kind of fake um, world of uh, hierarchy. So the... Um, like, does the online status really need to be below the subscribed um, to feed? Not really. I, I could put that above. Um, or the geolocation, like, do those need to be? No, they, they don't. They're just, like, arbitrarily um, selected where these components are going to be rendered. Um, just because that's the way that a tree is structured, we have to have a parent and children, and, and we want to kind of compose these things together. And so we're, we're throwing those things together. And I, I never really liked that a whole lot. Um, so our, we have these three problems again. Actually, make sure, oh yeah, LOL. No, I'm actually really sad. <laughs> so this is what makes React so hard, is um, we have to learn about JavaScript, uh, about the intricacies of JavaScript classes specifically. Not that learning JavaScript is bad. In fact, it's one of the things I like most about, Java, about React is that I spend most of my time, when I'm in React, I spend most of my time learning JavaScript um, and, and less of my time learning some um, domain-specific language or um, some APIs that I, I can't transfer to any other framework or, or work that I'm doing. So I spend a lot of time learning JavaScript with React, and I'm happy with that. But there are some things about JavaScript that are just really complicated, like the classes, uh, like we talked about. Um, and then life cycles. Um, arbitrarily splitting up the same concern across multiple life cycles can lead to uh, complication that's kind of frustrating, annoying. 
Uh, and then logic reuse. The patterns are great, but they have some significant trade-offs and, and downsides. If we could kind of get rid of that, um, those problems, this would be a great thing. And that's what React Hooks is all about. Um, so, the rest of the time, which actually is only nine minutes, I'm going to um, show you a demo. So I'd like you all to pull open your phone. We're going to go to geo or sorry, geochat.netlify.com. I should have done Firebase, huh? Because this is like um, a Google conference, but my bad. Um, so geochat, geo-chat.netlify.com. And the first thing it's going to do is ask you for your, uh, to, for your location. I promise I'm, I'm not going to do anything nefarious with that because I actually know where you are right now already. You're right there. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, when, when you've done that, go ahead and type in whatever you want to. I, I'm going to do Kent C. Dodds. Hey, hey we've got T-Money. Um, and then you can start sending messages. I accidentally sent a message with no content. My bad. Should have uh, added some validation with that. So we're going to say, whoa, I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. There we go. Hey there. Wait. Okay. Cool. So we're all chatting. So this is, um, and, and I can trust you all, right? You're not going to start like swearing profanities and stuff because that would ruin our experience here today. Um, so, <clears throat> so this is neat. And actually, if you refresh, you'll see that your username is preserved it, and your um, settings for allowing geolocation um, tracking is uh, also preserved. So I won't ask you again. Um, message is spelled wrong. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Message, spell, message. Message? What? I thought that was. I went through the whole code base and renamed it to message instead. Because I thought that was massage. How do you... Massage is M A S S. Oh. I literally went and refactored everything because I was like, oh, I spelled it wrong. Oh, man. How funny is that? Feel free to pull request this. This is open source. Um, <laughs> So if, if I refresh, then I'll see I have unread 22. So as I scroll up, that unread goes down, and I can see all those. I'm not storing that in local storage. So every time you refresh, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, unread the ones that you haven't seen yet. Um, and it also keeps track. Oh, goodness. i got to stop stepping on this. It also keeps track of um, your scroll position. So if you're scrolled to the bottom, it'll keep you scrolled at the bottom. But if you scroll up and people start uh, chatting, then it'll leave you in place. Right? That's kind of a nice experience. So I have this implemented both in traditional React as well as React Hooks. And we're going to compare those. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So if um, we go to our app here, I'm going to drop that. Is that font size OK? I, I just dropped it. OK, is that all right? OK, so let's look at the old, old version first. So we have an app. It's a class component. And what I decided to go with the, the monstrous um, single component. Like, you have to decide, am I going to go with the monstrous single component or with all these like, um, little components that uh, I wind up having to do this you know, pyramid of doom that I showed you before. I decided to go with the monstrous one, except for the geolocation. I'm using with geoposition from um, React functions, which is great, um, because using their render prompt version would have been a little harder. <laughs> so. So we're, we're getting the geoposition from our props. Um, but everything else is um, we're subscribing to Firebase and, and tracking the, um, like whether you're scrolled down to the bottom of the list or not. All of that stuff's happening right in the component. So let's look at some of the things that we're doing in here. Um, so we, we have some state. We initialize this to um, local storage so we can store your username. We have our messages. Um, we have some. Uh, to do this unread, basically what I'm doing is um, I will track which nodes have been visible. And so then we'll keep track of those nodes. And then we can determine based off of how many you've seen versus how many messages they are. Um, and then we keep track of the is stuck state. So all of these things, um, how many concerns are there? There's username, messages, see nodes, and stuck. Those are four like pretty isolated concerns, but they're all living right next to each other. Um, and they're, not only are they living next to each other, they're also separated from the code that is relevant to them. Uh, and so as part of, because of that fact, 
it makes it a little bit harder to, um, to change it, to delete it, and to share it, um, and, like to, to refactor to make it shareable. Uh, okay, so we have this send message that's going to say, hey, Firebase, add, add a message with their location, username, and content. Um, and then on component did mount, we need to track the visible children for the unread count, track the stack to know whether you're down at the bottom, uh, update the document title, and subscribe to Firebase. Um, here's, here's the fun one. Component did update. We have to, um, every, every single time it updates, we'll just go and update and make sure we are tracking all the children who are visible. Um, if it is stuck and the message length has changed, then we're going to um, make sure we stick the container so we'll scroll you down automatically. Um, we'll update the document title just in case something changed. And then um, if the latitude and longitude have changed, then we're going to unsubscribe from Firebase and then subscribe to the new Firebase um, chat room that you're going to be in based off of your changed location. This le legitimately works if you open up your developer tools or if you like walk a little ways away. Um, then you can check out the sensors and I'm going to go geolocation San Francisco. And now look, I sent myself a message in San Francisco. Welcome to San Fran. So, um, so actually that's kind of cool. Um, so we'll go back to, come back to Utah for a sec. Um, okay. So here's, we've got update document title. I'm not going to go too far into like the um, how to accomplish all these tasks. What's most important is, is to see that we have to do all these things. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, when the username changes, we'll update local storage. When the component unmounts, we want to make sure we unsubscribe from Firebase because we've navigated to a different page or something. The chat is no longer there. We don't need to have uh, Firebase subscribed anymore. And we um, have event listeners that are on the document to track scrolling. We want to uh, untrack that so we don't have that memory leak there either. Uh, and then here we have our render. And there's nothing really interesting about the render. OK, so that is our old app. And it's not too bad. Like, how, how long is this? I don't actually, I turned off my lines. But I think it's like 150 lines of code or something like that. So it's not, it's not terrible. And it looks kind of nice, right? So <clears throat> let's take a look at the new. Uh, new app with the last two minutes I've got. So with React hooks, things change quite a bit. We have no classes in this file. Class, nothing. Okay. So instead of using classes, um, we're going to use functions. And here, let me scroll down to our app. Now I'm going to actually move the app closer to the imports so we can see those together. So um, we have this function. If we want to be able to use state, we can just from React, we say use state. And here's our messages state. So that's going to be an array. And then anywhere in this component, we don't need to access the messages off of this dot mess state dot messages. This is literally just a variable that I have access to in my function. So we don't have to, there's, there's actually no instance of this in here either. You don't deal with this. You don't deal with classes. Um, you just deal with functions, enclosures, things that you need to know about in JavaScript already anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's a lot more straightforward. So then this use state, it actually returns an array. So if you're not familiar with this syntax, it's called destructuring. Uh, and it's kind of like this, const state stuff equals use state. And then state value, oh, whoops, equals state stuff at zero. And update state value is state stuff at one. Okay, so this is just shorter syntax for those three lines. Okay, so the first element um, of the array that's returned, we can call it whatever we want. We're calling it messages, and then the second one we call it whatever we want. We're going to call it set messages. So when we want to update our messages, um, any anywhere else we just call set messages with the messages we want to update. And when we do that, React is going to say, oh, OK, let me rerun your function to get the new JSX that I should be rendering. Uh, and at that point, React, when you come here and say, OK, use state again, it's going to say, oh, messages is new this time. So I'm going to give you that, what messages is now. And then you can go off and, and render your list of messages. Uh, the same uh, applies to username. Uh, here we're passing it a function, and it's going to call that function. Um, and whatever that function returns is, is what the initial value of that state should be. The reason that we're doing that is for an optimization so we don't read local storage every time this, um, our React component is called. 
We just do that, that the first time when the state is getting its default value. Uh, so yeah, we get the username, set username, uh, and then down here where we're calling, or yeah, when we handle the username change, we can set username. Um, okay, so then we have this, actually here, let's look at this one first. This geo position thing. So use geo position is what's called a custom hook. So that's not coming from um, React. React doesn't ship a use geo position hook. Um, this is coming from a package on NPM called the platform, which is the best, um, where it allows us to, to get the geo position. And it handles all of that um, um, management of, of requesting the position from the user and giving it to us, uh, giving us the, that position object um, when the user's given us permission. Um, this actually has some implications with suspense, which I don't have time to talk about. And in fact, I'm already two minutes over. So I'm going to wrap things up here in a little bit. Um, but what's really cool about this is um, because this is all just functions, um, it's really quite easy to um, extract and, and share, uh, handle that logic um, reusability by taking the stuff that really matters and extracting it into other functions. So here is this use sticky scroll container. And if we go to this function, it's actually just in our file. And all this is doing is using other hooks inside of it. So use effect allows you to do something that's a side effect um, after your render is run. Uh, there's some optimizations you can make here and, and things. Uh, the cleanup, so your component will unmount, or your component did update. You need to unsubscribe, whatever that um, is going to happen. Um, that is co-located with where you set up the subscriptions in the first place. Uh, so it's whatever you return from this use effect is going to be the cleanup. And so it, it all travels together. They're no longer separated across different life cycles. You say all of the concerns are in, in this one thing, and now I can really easily um, put that in a function and then use that in other components. So there's no nesting of, of components. There's no um, weird like render prop APIs or higher order components, all of that. Um, it kind of goes away because we're just using regular functions uh, to make this work. Um, I'll show you one last thing and then we'll wrap up. So the, the Firebase, the way that this is working is after our component has rendered, React is going to run this callback. And it's going to, uh, this callback is going to say, hey Firebase, I want to subscribe to you for this latitude and longitude. And whenever messages come in, I want to call this set messages with those messages. And when this <clears throat> when this component is all done, or uh, yeah, when, when we're unmounting, I want you to um, run this unsubscribe uh, method for me. So we don't have to set that as some instance property and call that later or whatever in the component will unmount. It's all happening right in the same effect. So if I wanted to share this to another component, I extract this to a, a function, and then I just use that function in that other component. I don't have to uh, find all the other places where this code is being used. Uh, one other thing that's really, really awesome about this is React has uh, built in the capability of determining or of allowing you to say when you want this effect to be rerun. So I want to resubscribe to I, I want to unsubscribe and then resubscribe anytime the latitude and longitude change, um, and not on every single re-render, um, not only once it's rendered, um, like only one time, but when these two things change. And so the second argument is an array. A values that React will, will check every single render and say, did those change? If they did, then I'll rerun this after uh, running that clean up function. OK, so that's all that I have time, um, time for uh, to show you. So let me just wrap up with the end and then the very end. So I've got some resources for you if you want to learn more about this stuff. Um, so there's, and my slides, or, or sorry, like this whole project is on GitHub. I have a link to that at the very end, so you don't have to like hurriedly type these out. Um, but I've got like a half hour video on hooks and suspense on Egghead. It, um, and not a, a single video, it's a series of videos. Um, it's a playlist and it's actually totally free, so you can go watch that. Uh, and we didn't get to talk about concurrent React, but it um, has a lot of interesting um, implications with uh, hooks. In fact, the, um, the uh, use geolocation hook here at the top wherever that went. Yeah, geoposition. Uh, that one is, is leveraging the suspense feature. Um, so that, uh, that would also be good for you to, to learn about. 
And with that, just want to say thank you. I didn't actually here. Let me get you the URL. I thought I had it in here. Um, there we go. So that's that's the URL for the repo. Uh, feel free to come and chat with me after. I, I'm not going to be able to stay the whole day. So if you want to chat, um, I'll just be out in the hall and we can chat. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.